February is Black History Month. Tonight, our Chris Thomas is introducing us to someone in our state government you might not have heard of before. Joe Steffenshaw is the first black director of California's Department of Finance, and his first six months on the job have not been easy. All eyes are often on the nation's most populous state, and that includes bad actors looking to make a quick buck. After all, California has the fourth largest economy in the world, and the state's newly sworn in finance director had his hands full when the department was hit by the unthinkable, a cyber attack. We had folks who worked nonstop, um, who spent nights to get things corrected. And so we're sitting down with Joe Steffenshaw for his first public comments on overcoming adversity and making history. You've certainly had to hit the ground running from a multi-billion dollar budget shortfall uh, to tackling a disruptive hack. Talk about how you were able to maneuver through all of this. Yeah, you know, I definitely came in at an interesting time uh, after a couple years of unprecedented uh, surpluses and facing the, the shortfall is definitely probably not something that one would wish for entering this, this position. Uh, and as we were building the budget, uh, we did have a, a IT security incident uh, at the beginning of, of December. This department really is a shining star in, in my eyes of state government and the, the department uh, really rallied together. Talk about how challenging that process was. I've heard some people had to abandon their computers and use pen and paper to get work done. Yes, we did. Uh, we were uh, faced with a situation where we had to make adjustments uh, to get our job done, go back to yeah, some, of the, yeah, some uh, you know, of the old conventional ways, uh, but uh, we were able to pull through that. And I really have to uh, take my hat off to the employees of the department for um, making sure that we were able to um, overcome the obstacles that we had in our way and deliver the governor's budget uh, on January 10th. Not only did they deliver the budget, the California Office of Emergency Services says the Department of Technology, the Cybersecurity Integration Center, and Highway Patrol all responded to the threat and no state funds were compromised. Joe Steffenshaw says he leaned on decades of experience, having worked his way up from a budget analyst to become director of the department. So you earn your master's in business administration from Sac State. You're now raising your family here in the capital city. What has this community meant to you and how do you think it prepared you for this role? Sacramento is my home. I've been here for most of my life. I love the city. Uh, I really appreciate uh, now as an adult and a father raising my family here uh, of what a wonderful place it is to, to raise a family. My goodness, they must be proud of you, huh? Um, my kids now are eight and six, so uh, I think if they fully appreciated what I did, they might be, but <laughs> right now I'm just dad, just dad who right? doesn't understand anything. So, yes. <laughs> All jokes aside, dad has just achieved a major milestone, becoming the first African American to lead the California Department of Finance. Did you ever dream you would be sitting in this seat making history? I didn't, honestly. It has not quite all set in yet because it's uh, such a huge role and responsibility. I was sworn in in August and it feels like it's been a number of years, everything that we've gone through in developing the governor's budget and releasing the governor's budget. You know, as we work through this, many have raised concerns about uh, climate change funding uh, being one of the biggest hit uh, items in the possible budget cuts, even as we continue to be a land of extremes here in California, from deadly wildfires and drought one year to flooding and mudslides the next, your response to those who call the budget short-sighted. We're currently going through the public process of the leg legislature, um, going over the governor's budget. They're holding hearings now, the budget committees, the budget subcommittees. Uh, it's the opportunity for the pu public to, to tune in, weigh in, understand, what is being contemplated in the budget de deliberations. Um, and so I just would encourage folks to, uh, to get involved uh, and, and um, to really understand better of, of what all goes into the process um, and the decision making in developing the annual financial plan for the state. Uh, are there things that I have not asked you? One of the things we wanted to do was really highlight this Black History Month, that there are people in our midst, even today, who are making a history and making a difference in our community. What does that mean to you? I have to acknowledge that 
Uh, it's, you know, nobody does it by themselves. There's um, always support. Uh, I, I recognize that I had that myself as I advanced my career, that um, it's my responsibility now to provide that same type of support to the younger generations uh, as they advance through their careers as, as well. Mm, and anchor Chris Thomas joined us now. Chris, this history-making man serves as the governor's chief fiscal policy advisor. He just dealt with a cyber attack in December. What are you now learning about the safety and security in our state budget this year? Mm, quite the six months, huh, to start <laughs> the job. Well, given the $22 billion budget shortfall, it does call for cuts to things like technology, modernization, and stabilization. But on the topic of cybersecurity itself, the budget calls for adding $28 million and actually 40 new positions to tackle any possible new threats. We have more information on our website, abc10.com slash links. Great, Chris, thanks. And then on Wednesday, you're going to be sitting down with Ben Jealous, the former head of the NAACP. What can we expect to hear? You know, he's actually the youngest ever elected president of the national NAACP, and he is here tonight in Oak Park. He's doing a book signing and taking questions at Underground Bookstore in Oak Park. The book is called Never Forget Our People Were Always Free, a parable of American healing. And to me, it says a lot about Sacramento and the capital city that this national leader is here taking questions, signing books, things of that nature. So we'll talk about everything from policing to the civil rights concerns of our time on Wednesday night. Great. Looking forward to that interview. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.